Hey, what's up guys? You're Chipsy, and we are back here today with my ITL game for week four of season eight of the ITL. And today we're going to be taking on Phantom Base, otherwise known as Tyler, in uh, what should be a pretty interesting game. Tyler has a, uh, a really well put together team, in my opinion. He had the Mega Latios, which he didn't choose to bring to this week's game, but he's got uh, screen support in Ninetales, and then he's got a really interesting cast of Z-Move users um, with Talonflame, Venomoth, and Miss Magius all being uh, really, really viable, cheaper kind of Z-Move users. He spread it out his Z, Z points along his kind of cheaper picks to really get the most bang for his buck. So I can appreciate that. Um, but he also has Zero Aura on his theme, which is a pretty big threat to a lot of teams with its coverage and just ability to run a ton of offense given its massive speed stat. So uh, he can definitely run it like a mixed Zero Aura here with something like Close Combat, Plasma Fist, Hidden Power Ice for my uh, Gligar as well, and potentially even like Grass Knot if he wants to lure in like a more defensive pylo. Uh, so he's definitely got options for that thing. It's a, it's a pretty big threat versus my team. Uh, and he's also brought the Crooked Crookedile, which is uh, going to be probably his main way of checking my Reuniclus. Um, but certainly a threatening team. Uh, he left a few threats on the bench though, like I mentioned, like Mega Latios. I guess he felt like it was going to be too easy for me to trap him with um, my Megatar. So that's a that's a fair kind of um, judgment there. But certainly a threatening team. Uh, but the team that I'm rocking this week, we have a nice Scarfed Kyurem. I am mixed on this set, so I, I can bop stuff like uh, Ninetales with the Iron Head. Um, Earth Power is pretty free looking at his team. If I can remove his Talonflame, then Earth Power uh, might be able to be a win con in the late game if I can just sweep with that. Um, and if I remove Tentacruel, then he does not appreciate switching into Ice Beam with Rocks Up because Ninetales would be taking uh, a decent jump from that as well. Uh, then I have a Maginna here. Very bulky. I am, uh, I think I'm Shift Gear on this set, I believe. I believe I'm Shift Gear Calm Mind um, with like Gleam and T Bolt on this set. Um, so a very, very nice wink on. Uh, obviously, I need to remove Ferrothorn to achieve that, uh, but I can use that. Uh, I can abuse Ferrothorn with my Uniclus, which is a Carmine, another Carmine variant. Uh, Carmine Signal Beam, Star Shock, really, really solid versus his team. And I also have Fire Punch my um, offensive Megatar here, so I can lure Ferro with that, as well as uh, Heat Wave on my Torn. So, uh, then we have, like I mentioned, we've got Defensive Reuni, uh, Adamant, Titar, Rocks, really, really solid versus his team. Like, he struggles to switch into this Tar. If he wants to go Hard Crook, I have Super Power on this set, so I can actually do, like, 80-plus damage after Intimidate to Offensive Crook, which is pretty amazing with Super Power. And uh, that's really going to mean that he can't, uh, that he can no longer switch in to any attack on my team. Um... The nice thing about this is as well, like, if his Crook is Scarf, which is one of his viable revenges to shift the beginner, he's not going to be able to comfortably take hits from my Tyranitar, uh, nor is he going to be able to tank a hit from my Torn, because I am z move on my Torn. Um, and then we have a pretty nice mixed defensive Pilus one here, really uh, useful to check stuff like Zero Aura. I take stuff like plus one Life Orb, Admin CC after Rocks, um, I take like plus one Life Orb Grass Knot. After rocks from like modest uh, zero aura, so I've evaded in such a way as to always be able to take this thing on. He isn't Z move, so I don't have to worry about bloom dooms or all that pummelings. Uh, and it also does give me a really nice check to stuff like his Mega Latios and a sort of pseudo check to his Crocodile and his Nine Tails. So uh, lastly, we do have a uh, defogging Torn. I don't want to be hit with T spikes this game because um, my Tita and my Kurim both appreciate being able to stay. Um, unstatused if possible <laughs> um, but yeah knockoff really really clean versus his team because he's not Z0 or he's going to be losing an item regardless nothing is going to want to stay in and take a knockoff but maybe the talent but that thing risks taking a Z hurricane so yeah Torn looking really useful in this game so we're going to lead off we're going to kick this game off he's going to lead off with his talent as I am going to lead off with my swine here uh, I want to get up my rocks turn one but um, more importantly I want to remove this talent flames gale wing so if he's like some sort of SD set and he thinks I'm not carrying rock coverage and he thinks he can just uh, start to boost up on me, I want to at least get uh, get some chip off on him, determine his set and bring him outside of Gow Wings range so at the very least my Scarf to cure him in the back can uh, revenge with a Scarf Fusion Bolt. But uh, he's going to go for Wisp this turn as I do just fire off a, uh, an Icicle Spear here. Obviously uh, it's going to be pretty weak considering that I am now burnt and he is he d definitely does have some HP investment, which is interesting. And the fact that he has Wisp implies that he's not like SD to attack, so SD natural gift. He's more than likely SD roost or bulk up roost willow with uh, mono stab. So 
that's uh, it's interesting to note, but right here I'm going to set my rocks as he is going to make the play of going hard out to Tentacruel. Fair play on his part because I'm either going to set rocks there, uh, potentially edge if I have it, um, go for Toxic or um, go, go for Article Spear. I'm never clicking EQ that turn. So a good play from Tyler there going into Tenta as I do want to preserve health on Pilot. I can set up rocks at another point during the match and if I can remove Tenta, I can get my rocks up later on. So going to go hard into my Torn here as this will provide me with a knock the following turn or a defog if you wanted to go for something like the T-Spikes into rapid spin there. So he's going to spin, um, which which is interesting. And now he's going to go for the Protect, which um, tells me a lot about this Tenta. He's going to have Scald, obviously. He's, he's, he's got uh, Rapid Spin and Protect, which means that he may have Toxic in its last slot, implying that he's complete Reuni Bait, uh, as well as complete CM Megina Bait. So um, I am going to go for knockoff, removing this thing's uh, Black Sludge making it a lot easier for my Palace when to get a Brox later on, as he does just fire for the Toxic, and so now he's re revealed his entire moveset, he has no way of touching Rooney, and nor does he have any way of reliably beating uh, Carmine Magina. So right here I'm going to switch out to Rooney, as he does just go for the Protect here, and uh, I'm going to Carmine up here. I am uh, Cobra on this Rooney, so I can comfortably take on this uh, Crook, and I don't really have to fear it too much as he is just going to go for the knockoff. And I weaken this thing, which puts my Tyranitar in an amazing spot now, because nothing nothing really wants to switch in on the coverage that I have on my Megatar. Like, literally, his team just gets destroyed now. Um, Tenta has had its lefties knocked off its Black Sludge. Thero gets Fire Punched, and this thing just gets Super Powered or Ice Punched. So, or, or Fire Punched, actually, at that range. I don't have Ice Punch. I got Edge in the last slot, so... Uh, he's now going to set up his rocks on my Reuni, as I do just fire off a signal boom and take him out here, which is really nice for me. Uh, I do have Defog on Torn, so if worse comes to worst, I can just uh, click Defog with that thing to remove the rocks. But he's he's going to go into his talent here and click Bulk Up, which uh, which is interesting. So he's Bulk Up, Roost, Willow, and uh, more than likely like Brave Bird, I thought, or well, possibly Flabless to hit my Magina. But I'm going to go into Torn here. I want to keep Reuni. Reuni is an amazing win condition in this late game. Um, if I play Reuni right, it can honestly just win, uh, especially after this Talon's gone down, because I take any hit from Zero Aura. Like, I'm not too echoed by, I think, anything. Um, I think Plasma Fist is like, does like 51 max or something like that. And I'm not too echoed by, um, like, Modest Life Orb T-Bolt. So, uh, Reuni is an incredible win condition in this game. So, I'm going to go into Torn here, and uh, I, I expect him to either Z-Move here or Roost, and uh, either way, he'll be out of his Gale Wings meaning that either my Tyranitar or my uh, Kyurem Black will be able to outspeed him the following turn and kill him, or Tyranitar can just tank any hit and obviously take him out with a stone edge even through a, uh, even through a burn. So, going to go into my turn here. It's the most expendable mod at this point, and uh, he is going to take me out here with a Flare Blitz, revealing that he does have fire coverage in that last slot. So, now I'm going to go into my T-Tar here. I'm just going to click uh, Stone Edge, Mega Evolve, and click Edge as he does go into his Tentacle to stack it off. Unfortunately, I do miss the Edge here, which... Um, which is obviously a bit annoying, especially if I get burnt the following turn with the Scald, but Tyler's going to click Rapid Spin, because he didn't want this game. <laughs> we have a history, uh, the Sydney Sharp Eaters, of getting um, either like frozen or crit, or missing a ton of shit in the ITL, so Tyler didn't want um, uh, he didn't want this game to be impacted by hacks. I asked him if he was sure, and he was like, yeah. Um, I was like, alright, sweet. So we take out the Tenta here, as Zero Aura is going to come in, Whoops, and obviously I don't want this thing taking a CC, so I'm going to pivot out into my Megina, and then uh, double into my Pilo, expecting him to click Plasma Fist the following turn. It also covers him uh, going into Talon, because I can set up my rocks. But he actually goes into his Pharaoh here, which is uh, which is a fair play, because he actually eventually turns out to be a Salt Fest Ferrothorn. I don't know that at this stage in the match, but he's a Salt Fest, and like Max Bidef, so like not offensive as Salt Fest, but like really, really fat as Salt Fest Pharaoh, so... Um, now I'm going to go into my pilot here and get my rocks up as he does make the switch out into Talon, wanting to get it in before rocks, which I can certainly respect. But I'm going to go hard onto Tita. I am the, T <laughs> the Talon Flame counter as he is going to go for the bulk up here. And he's going to burn me with Wisp the following turn, but uh, Tita is powerful. And uh, even at plus one through the burn, we Oko him here with this Stone Edge. So he's going to go down. Uh, and now he's going to bring in his Zero Aura once again. And uh, I want to preserve Tita. For a little bit longer and I'm going to go into my pilot here knowing that I can tank a close combat uh, more than likely um, from his spread and this forces him to take uh, the life orb damage and the sand chip. I'm going to die here to the burn but preserving T-Tile's sand 
uh, could be really important in checking the nine tails and also ensuring that this zero aura takes some more sound chip as uh, the closer this thing gets in range to ice beam the better from my my uh, curum i think he's probably already in he's certainly in range at minus one but uh, i am going to sack off my pilot here i'm thinking of the curum and reuniclus endgame right here so i'm going to click uh, earth power this turn uh, obviously ice beam took took out zero aura at the stranger health and it did more to his um ferrothorn which which is something to consider but on the off chance that he went into his nine tails expecting ice beam or, or like a dragon stab move um, I wanted to get the most damage possible off on my nine tails because I can switch Kirim in a few more times on rocks and the more chip I get the closer like if I chip nine tails down a few times with earth power um, he's not going to be able to take an ice beam which is going to be what I'm going to click on subsequent turns in which Kirim's in versus this zero aura so that's my thought process here but he's actually going to go into his ferry here and he's going to take what 12 from that earth power and, and I'm like max special attack like I've got a lot of like, like that's base 120 so this is like this is where he reveals to be assault vest max bidef ferrothorn <laughs> essentially so uh this is really um good for him in terms of checking my uh curum but it's uh it's also great for me because this means reuni uh, comfortably comes in and recovers up on this thing as he is going to go into zero aura here he's going to make the double into zero aura i guess predicting uh, some sort of switch on my part or maybe scouting for the hidden power fire i'm not sure um but Reuni is comfortably outside of range of any attack from this Zero Aura, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recognize that Reuni is my win condition. I don't want to bank on uh, him not creating me here because it's the ITL. <laughs> uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preserve my Reuni and uh, I'm going to let this thing take a bit more life orb chip. I'm going to go into my T-Tar, which is going to force him to, to take two rounds of chip because he's not clicking CC here. He's 100% clicking Plasma Fist. He's going to take uh, life orb chip plus the sand chip. And this is going to really limit the amount of times so you can switch in on rocks in future turns. So he's going to go for Plasma Fist. And it's going to bring me to a, a pretty low amount of health where he will be able to take me out the following turn. But in conjunction with Sand and two rounds of Life Orb, he's going to be left really low at a point where uh, he can only switch in once more on rocks and get one more hit off. If that 13% is, in fact, like the actual amount of HP is that He could be a 12 knowing Showdown. Um, that happens a lot, so he might actually not even be able to switch in again on rocks, which is good to know. So right here, I am just going to click Earth Power. Again, I don't want to give him a free switch into Nine Tails. Um, Earth Power obviously doesn't do a ton, but it does enough to where he can't abuse um, being in on my Kyurem. Like he can't just click Nasty Plot or Sub or something like that. So he is going to sack off his Zera, which means the Uniclus can win at this point. Um, I don't, and I don't have to fear crits or anything like that. So he's going to go now into his nine tails. I'm going to stay in here and click Earth Power. I don't want him to be sub Calm Mind or sub Nasty Plot. So I want to punish that if that is the case. As uh, he will just go for the uh, Blizzard here actually and take out my Kyurem. And uh, right here I am going to go into my Megina. Um, Megina can just pretty much click Gleam here as he is going to bring in the Pharaoh. And Pharaoh again is just an easy switch back into my reunion here. So I'm not, not, not too fussed about that. And the Nine Tails is obviously going to be taking chip if it does if he does want to make the double. Reuniclus can live any hit from the Nine Tails and take it out with Psy Shock. And uh, I am faster than the, than the Pharaoh, so I could just recover up the falling turn. But he's going to go for Gyrable here. Now, I contemplated going for the um, going for the Psy Shock, expecting him to go into Nine Tails. But um, my safer end game is to just recover up and go into Megiana the following turn on the potential trick or Encore. Um, like if he's, if he's a choice locked variant he's going to click trick potentially or he'll just attack with like blizzard or something like that if he's encore he's clicking encore this turn either way Megin is my play of choice as I will be able to take any any hit from this thing as he does just go for the, the uh, specs blizzard actually and he's going to end up freezing my Megin over here which is uh, pretty unfortunate the ITL curse continues but um, we're going to we're actually going to unthaw in a few turns here he's going to miss the following blizzard and uh, he's going to miss another one the next turn, which is going to mean that uh, my beginner is going to be able to unthaw. Even if he'd taken out my beginner at that point, Reuni just won the game with Psy Shock, and then I could just come mine up on the Pharaoh. And he obviously he'd have to hit Blizzard anyway, and Blizzard does like 35 or something to my Reuni because I've got I do have some spit out for my Reuni. So uh, he's going to go into his Pharaoh here. I'm just going to go back out into my Reuni, knowing that this thing cannot cannot touch me at all. <laughs> So he's going to go for the Bulldoze here, lower my speed, which is a cool tech. Um, maybe that's his way of losing, uh, of not losing to Shift Gear Megina. Um, 
eventually just wearing me down with bulldoze, but I'm going to recover up here on the off chance that he crits me with uh, power, power Whip or something like that. Uh, the Power Whip's doing, yeah, it's doing about like 50 something with a crit, so that's not, it's not doing a lot at all. As um, I'm going to recover up once more. I think, no, 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 I just attack you with Psy Shock. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be uh, my week 4 game against Tyler. Really, really well played game. I think um, Tyler played this well, I think he prepped well. And um, yeah, it was a fun one. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, I played very conservatively with the Reuniclus. Realistically, I could have um, I could have just won with it a few turns earlier. I'll go back. Um, I'll go back to the turn with Zeraora in on Reuni. And uh, yeah, I, I could have just calm minded up, re recovered up, like literally life orb stalled the Zeraora. But um, I knew how I was going to win this end game with. Um, with my zero or recovering up on the reunion and setting up on that. So I chose to take the safer route and it did pay off. Um, I don't really care about differential in, in, in this league. It's, I think I'm already, I think I'm like leading the league anyway in differential anyway. It didn't, it didn't matter the the kind of important thing in this game was, um, preserving the win and that was how I was going to do it. So yeah, I think it was a few turns back from here. Yeah. So in this situation, uh, reunion was at 70%. Um, and yeah, so Reuni is at 70%. He brings in his Zero Aura here. And uh, this thing is revealed to be Life Orb. So really, I could just spam Recover. He's doing about 50 50 ish with Plasma Fists. <laughs> um, so he needs, um, firstly, he needs like a high roll crit to actually kill my Reuni um, based on his spread. But um, there, there was no risk. Uh, there was no point in risking that when I had an alternative way of winning this game. Uh, with my scarf gear in the back so sometimes whilst it, it's kind of tempting to like do stuff like that like to knowing you live in a hit you, you got to kind of think like is it worth it like is it worth him critting me like if he crits me here with reuni like do i have an out versus something like a specs nine tails do i have an out versus like carmine nasty plot or like, like carmine encore or something like that can i still beat his ferrothorn and honestly that was the thing like if, he, if I lost Ryuni here and he played his Ferrothorn well, I wouldn't be able to beat it with Kyurem. I wouldn't be able to beat it with my Megina because I don't have Hidden Power hidden power Fire on my set. So he could potentially beat my last remaining Mons with the combination of Ferro and his Ninetales. So that's that's why I preserve Ryuni. If I had like different win cons in the back, like if I had another guaranteed way of killing Ferrothorn and I knew that I could always kill any variant of Ninetales, perhaps I would have been a bit more uh, like a bit more kind of liberal with my Ryuni here. But because like this was the way that I always guaranteed the win, um, that's why I chose to play it out the way I did. So I, I hope that kind of in, uh, was kind of like a lesson in, you know, identifying your win cons and uh, playing to them. But that's going to be it versus Tyler. Uh, I'm going to announce now some transactions that I made for the rest of the season. So for those of you guys who are still listening, you'll get to hear a little bit of extra ITL uh, news, I guess. So um, at the end of this week... Um, uh, I did decide to make a couple of drops on the team, so uh, I love Whimsicott. I think Whimsicott is really good on the team, and I, I was really enjoying using it. Um, but that being said, Magneton was a mon that I really only bought to, I really only drafted to check uh, certain mons. I, I drafted it to predominantly help me versus my Sizzle matchup. On the initial draft of my team, I had Azumarill, and uh, obviously now having Keldeo, I have a much better matchup versus something like Sizzle. Um, but at the time, I was pretty sizzle weak, and Magneton really helped remedy that. That was my week one game against Moran. Um, but the fact that Moran is likely not making playoffs now, he's he's had a pretty rough season, and um, statistically, I don't think he can even I don't think he can make playoffs at this point with his differential. So I'm not going to be facing Mega Sizz. Um, and the fact that now my my squad is already stronger versus Sizz, I decided to drop Magneton um, and pick up. I drop Magneton and uh, my Whimsicott and pick up Rotom Mo as well as Alolan Persian. Um, I also decided to remove Torn as my Z move user, which I really did enjoy Z Torn and I still do. But uh, I figured, you know, we're doing we're doing really well in the ITL. Why not why not have some fun with the latter half of the season and make Kieran Black our new Z move user, as well as Alolan Persian. So those are going to be my two new Z move users. I think uh, obviously losing Whimsicott, I wanted. Um, a mon that sort of did what Whimsicott offered to the team through Z Memento uh, and obviously Z, uh, Z Parting Shot Persian can offer that to my team it can aid in my setup sweepers it can provide like a like a, a full restore like a max potion to whatever mon has been weakened down 
whether it's my Migian or my Reuni or my Tyranitar. Um, and it obviously doesn't die in the process. So <laughs> obviously Memento or Whimsicott throws it away. Um, but it is obviously really reliable. Um, but Z parting shot, really, really nice. I don't lose Persian in the process, so I can preserve them on in the back. And um, uh, just how much Persian is, it allows me to use Z Kurum as my second option there. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun to use. Uh, definitely looking forward to using uh, those new mons. And Rotom Mo, I think, is uh, a pretty underrated mon. It's something that I've never used, but I've seen it used pretty well. So I'm pretty keen to try that out. And yeah, that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, get hyped for the rest of the ITL season. I think next week we face off against Nova, so that should be a fun one. He's got Ash Greninja on his team, so I uh, look forward to that. That's going to be it for me. Drop a like if you enjoyed. And if you guys want to see more draft content, make sure you sub to the channel. We're, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers, which is pretty exciting so if you would like to stay up to date with the itl uh, the dpl uh, the bbl or the leagues that i'm in <laughs> potentially the best never rest league if i upload that at some point make sure you stick around and i'll drop a subscribe that's gonna be from me i'll catch you guys next time